The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Good morning to you. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. It is Friday the 16th of April, and we've gathered online to pray the office of morning prayer, and I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I'm going to take a moment to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church, which continue to ascend into heaven even if we can't physically gather for worship. You can do the same along with me if you'd like, and when we're ready, the service of morning prayer will begin on page 6. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. The psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 16 and 17, beginning on page 345. Preserve me, O God, for in thee have I put my trust. I have said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. I have no good apart from thee. All my delight is upon the saints that are in the earth and upon such as excel in virtue. But they that run after another god shall have great trouble. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, neither make mention of their names within my lips. The Lord himself is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou shalt maintain my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will thank the Lord for giving me counsel. My heart also instructeth me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me, for he is on my right hand. Therefore I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall dwell in safety. For why? Thou wilt not leave my soul to hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. 
Thou shalt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures for evermore. Hear the right, O Lord, consider my complaint. And hearken not unto my hearken unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence, and let thine eyes look upon the thing that is right. Thou hast proved and visited mine heart in the night season. Thou hast tried me, and shalt find no wickedness in me. For I am utterly purposed that my mouth shall not offend. As for the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the ways of the destroyer. My steps have held fast to thy paths, and my feet have not slipped. I have called upon thee, O God, for thou shalt hear me. Incline thine ear to me, and hearken unto my words. Show thy marvellous loving kindness, thou that art the saviour of them that put their trust in thee, from such as resist thy right hand. Keep me as the apple of an eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the ungodly that trouble me, even mine enemies that compass me round about to take away my soul. They close their heart to pity, and their mouth speaketh proud things. They lie waiting in our way on every side, watching to cast us down to the ground. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a lion's whelp lurking in secret places. Up, Lord, confront him and cast him down. Deliver my soul from the ungodly by thy sword. By thy hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world, who have their portion in this life, and whose bellies thou fillest with thy treasure. They have children at their desire, and leave the rest of their substance for their babes. But as for me, I shall behold thy presence in righteousness, and when I awake, I shall be satisfied with thy likeness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Daniel, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. <clears throat> King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, whose height was sixty cubits and its breadth six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to assemble the satraps, the prefects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image, which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. 
You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no heed to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Morning Prayer continues on page 7. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true, and only Son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is written in the first epistle of St. John, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. 
No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who does right is righteous, as he is righteous. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God commits sin, for God's nature abides in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this it may be seen who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not do right is not of God, nor he who does not love his brother. Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Morning Prayer continues on page 9. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty Father, who hast given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that every one might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honour of thy name. Amen. I invite your prayers this morning for all those who are in need of prayer whether they have particularly asked us to pray for them or whether the Spirit of God puts it into our hearts to make prayers. As we make intercession for them this morning, we are reminded that we are coming into God's presence with them on our hearts. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for praying with us this morning. I hope that these daily services of morning and evening prayer are a blessing to you. More than that, I hope that they've become a habit for you, part of your disciplined, ordered daily life of prayer. Remind you that we pray morning prayer on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 o'clock, evening prayer on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 4.30. And while those are the times that the videos premiere, you can, of course, tune in on demand at any point later in the day that's convenient for you. Until we meet again, be good. God bless and take care of each other. Bye-bye.